Okay, I uh, don't think the weather's gonna get any better to do this video. Jeez Louise, so I'm just gonna do this video. Uh, this is not a gimmick, this is not a joke. I'm going to tell you in this video how to make money on YouTube and making viral videos, finding videos that licensing agencies are gonna be willing to license. I've had a bunch of people email me you know, about the pandemic, how they've lost their jobs, uh, how they're non-essential workers and they're unable to work right now. And I've got, you know, if through no fault of my own, I've got seven years of YouTube experience and video licensing experience to be able to share some insights, how to actually just make extra money on the side, uh, regardless of what else you're doing in your life. So if you have a job and you're lucky enough to be working now, all the better. If not, here's how it works. So it's gonna be a multi-step process. This is not all about YouTube and this is not all about, and I caught a fish on camera. This is already starting well. This is already starting well, people. We caught a fish, a tiny perch. Now people know that I can actually catch fish. Beautiful little baby perch, put it back. If we catch something big enough to eat, we might contemplate catching and eating. Okay, off to a great start. So this is a multi-prong, a multi-layer thing. YouTube is not the only way that people can make money. Everybody knows you can monetize on YouTube, but the criteria to getting a channel monetized or you know becoming a partner on YouTube, you have to have a thousand subs and 4,000 watch hours. So if you stumble across a video that's a work of art that can make you money, you won't necessarily be able to do it on YouTube unless your channel's already monetized and your partner verified. So let's start from the beginning. And plus, you know, succeeding on YouTube and creating a community on YouTube is a beast unto itself. Okay, before YouTube, there are these things called video licensing agencies and they buy and sell and license videos, newsworthy events, amazing things, cute moments, dog videos, cat videos, things that everybody has on their phone that don't necessarily think about monetizing. And also people think like monetizing is a dirty word. We got another fish. People think monetizing is a dirty word. Like people should be ashamed of trying to make money uh, in life or, you know, off videos that they've shot, moments that they've captured. However you feel about monetizing, whether or not you think it's dirty, greedy, opportunistic, whatever, we're gonna talk about it. So people have these moments on their phones and they don't realize that these moments, these videos, these clips, birds migrating, a squirrel eating a nut, a squirrel jumping out of a garbage can is sellable. And there are video licensing agencies that would love to sell it. They shop it around to their network of clients and they literally sell the videos. Uh, for those of you who've been watching this channel, a couple weeks ago, I did the methane bubbles in the ice. I sold that video five or six times for a few hundred dollars. Something I was doing that day anyhow, I made money off of it. And there's another fish. Um, so the video licensing agencies, how do they work? You don't need a YouTube channel to sell a video. And so what happens is people who do have YouTube channels, even if they're monetized or partner verified, they post a video. These licensing agencies literally shop around YouTube, Twitter, Facebook for sellable videos. And then they contact the owners and they say, can we license your video? Can we borrow it? There are various forms of this uh, request. Some are scams and some are legit. Some will say, can we use your video? We'll give you credit. Yeah, okay. Uh, they say, th the theory is that exposure is a good thing. Yeah. People who say exposure is a good thing uh, are not rock climbers or mountaineers. Exposure kills people. It doesn't help people survive in, in, out in the wilderness. So exposure is useless. What you wanna do is sell the video. If they're gonna make money off your video, you should make money off your video. So the legit video licensing agencies will contact you, say, we'd like to license your video. We'd like to have the rights to license it. Will you give it to us? And you can say yes or no. They will take anywhere between 40 and 50% of the sales generated from that video. Some of you might say, that's, that's greedy, that's my money, that's my video. Okay, well, if you don't wanna share 50% of it with them, enjoy 100% uh, of nothing because you're not gonna be able to sell that video to the BBC, to CTV, to CNN, to Mother Jones, Nat Geo. So good, you can keep 100% of nothing because you don't have the network of uh, purchasers that these video licensing agencies do. And they make money. They make good money selling these videos. So don't be stubborn and think you can do it yourself because you can't. I can't, I still can't, and I still don't. Now, some of these agencies are better than others. Uh, and I'm not plugging any agency in particular. This is not a sponsored ad. I'm not being paid for this. I have ended up using three agencies pretty much alone. Storyful, 
news flare, and rumble. I'm going to get to rumble in a second because rumble's like YouTube mixed with a video licensing agency. We'll get there. So I've had a good experience with news flare and storyful. They've made tons of money. They've sold a bunch of videos. And so you can create an account on some of these places where you can upload your own videos and they can sell what they think is sellable. Some of them will insist on claiming monetization of your video on YouTube. And this is regardless of whether or not your channel is monetized. So they will claim the video on YouTube because that's where they pull it from. And they will, in addition to taking 40 or 50% of any license for the video, they'll also take, I think it's 40 to 50% of ad revenue that they generate on YouTube. If your channel's not monetized, this is actually a good thing because you can't make that AdSense revenue anyhow on YouTube. So these video licensing agencies will request permission. You will give them its limited copyright or exclusive, but you can take it back at any point uh, by canceling your agreement with them. There's different notice periods for different viral, uh, video viral, video licensing agencies. They will own it, they will shop it around. Newsflare in particular, whenever they make a sale, you get notified and you get paid by PayPal within 24 hours. Storyful pays you monthly or quarterly. Um, no detailed breakdown, but whatever. So all of these video licensing agencies have different methods of sales, payment, accountability to their users. But they all take these clips and shop them around to sell them. And if you happen to catch moments, you can make money by selling those video moments. Um, things to look out for in a bad video licensing agency are the ones who are going to take exclusivity of the video, not actually shop it around, but only use it for their own marketing or promoting their own channel. That's bad. Um, and if I'm not going to say which agencies are bad or I've had bad experiences with, but I use Storyful, Newsflare, and Rumble. Uh, so I've had good experiences with them and they've been very good, very transparent, and very successful. So if you have random videos on your phone that you're posting to Facebook, that you're posting to Twitter, that you're posting to YouTube, you can sell them by getting in touch with a licensing agency and saying, hey, are you interested in this video? Okay, now, Rumble and YouTube and monetizing on YouTube. Let's start with Rumble. Rumble, for those of you who don't know, it's a Canadian-based company. It's like YouTube in that you can monetize content on Rumble. It obviously has a fraction of the traffic that YouTube has, but their CPM, their cost per mil, the amount you get paid per thousand views is actually comparable to YouTube. You can create an account there, upload your videos, submit them for full exclusive licensing through Rumble. Rumble has both a network and a platform. And so they can go shop the video around to Yahoo News, MSN, whatever, and sell it there. They also go put it on their platforms on YouTube where they get AdSense revenue that they then split with you. And I think Rumble is actually like 90% to the creator, 10% to Rumble. And on Rumble as a platform itself, it monetizes views the same way YouTube does. So Rumble is another good way where if you have a video, you can create an account, upload it, and take a chance. No one has ever lost by trying. Then the issue is YouTube and whether or not you get to the point of partner verified monetizing your channel. Uh, it takes 1,000, at, at the point of shooting this video, where January something, 16th, I know it's a Saturday because kids are not in school. Um, they, uh, as of now, it's 1,000 subs and 4,000 watch hours, which takes some time to get to. I mean, on my second channel, it took me, it took me some time to get there, but I'm there and now it's partner verified. So if you're not partner verified, you want to try to get partner verified, try to create a channel with a community, with a brand, with videos, and I'll get to that in a second. Once you get partner verified, then you get AdSense revenue on YouTube. But AdSense revenue on YouTube is only one piece of this pie of monetizing videos, because even if you get AdSense revenue on YouTube, you're not licensing that video that's posted to YouTube to, say, news agencies, uh, nature channels. Uh, we were on ridiculousness, like, three times. I was on Outrageous Acts of Science. I think three times as well. So even if you're on YouTube monetize, you're not maximizing the potential of any video. Um, so you might want to contemplate going through a video licensing agency. If you want the monetization on YouTube and you only want to license the video, then you go with an agency that will not insist on claiming your video on YouTube, but will sell it independently and you get 100% of your AdSense revenue on YouTube. So I mean, that's, it's, it's a real way to make money off random videos that you might have on your phone that somebody would be interested in selling cute moments people need those these days and so you know blogs facebook pages are looking to license cute material that will make people feel good 
Now let's get to the YouTube side where you want to brand, you want to monetize your channel, you want to create a community, you want to get to a thousand subs, you want to get to 4,000 watch hours. How do you do it? Learn from my mistake in particular. I've been on YouTube since 2014 and I only got to any meaningful following uh, in like 2016. I mean, I got to 10,000 subs, but off one viral video in 2014 of a squirrel taking my GoPro up a tree. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a fish, that's a fish. Come on, come on, what do we got? What do we got? We got off is what we got. So I did not know really how to build a channel until recently. And this is gonna be gross, close your eyes people. Uh, and it's only now that I've realized, you know, how you build a channel on YouTube. Uh, number one piece of advice would be to watch Casey Neistat's video, just keep uploading. How do you build a channel? How do you gain traction? How do you get views? Just keep uploading. Hone your skill, hone your niche, and upload content to the platform so that YouTube has a chance of recommending your content to others. Community on YouTube is the thing that I never fully appreciated until I met someone through my channel who made me realize the value of community and how YouTube is community. Build your community by building a niche, by engaging your community, by putting out consistent content. Quality is relative, quality is subjective, but putting out content consistently that your community knows is coming, that they know what to expect, that they know what they're gonna get on your channel. Find your niche, find your voice, find what your channel is about. And then you can build the community on YouTube uh, to allow yourself to have a potentially, you know, profitable, monetizable channel. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of grit and a lot of hustle because some niches are oversaturated and to succeed in say cooking on YouTube, you gotta have something unique, some angle that has not been there yet or some darn good recipes and other niches don't exist yet. And then you gotta build those niches. And I would argue that the law niche on YouTube now has blossomed but didn't exist back in the day. And so you have to create a niche if it's not there, create the interest, create the community, or if it is already a saturated niche, just do something spectacular to crack into that niche and to make a, a name and a brand for yourself. Uh, and then the basics, you know, on YouTube, thumbnails, titles, not clickbait titles, accurate, catchy titles that get people to come and don't get them irritated once they're there. Click, you know, cl catchy thumbnails, but not click clickbait thumbnails, not things that are actually not in the video that are gonna get people to watch the video and get people irritated when they're not there. And then just build your brand hone your voice and refine your voice. But this is a way to actually make money at any point in time, pandemic or no pandemic, whether you are a millionaire already or not, video licensing, capture moments, go to these agencies and say, are you interested in this video? And you will be shocked and surprised, gleefully so, at how you can actually make money with random videos that you already probably have on your phone. And as far as the YouTube channel goes, that's how you build a brand, that's how you build a community. Same thing on Rumble, for those of you who don't know it, Rumble is now the free speech alternative, but I've been on Rumble since 2015. I just never fully exploited it because YouTube uh, didn't have the problems then that it has now in terms of content uh, issues, politics and the other stuff. But both great places to build a community, to monetize videos and to make passive income through stuff that you'd probably be doing anyhow. Um, and if you have time now, as many people do, it is an amazing way to make extra income on the side and alleviate whatever economic burden uh, all of us and a lot of us are feeling right now. Plus it gives you something to do. It gives you a passion and a way to pass the time, a way to distract yourself from what's going on out there. Walk around, capture random stuff. An ant carrying a moth on the street. I, I'll give you some examples. Methane bubbles squirrel jumping out of a garbage can. I made a, uh, a video, a Snapchat video. It was a 30 second video, barely got a thousand views on YouTube. It sold, I don't know who purchased it, this was a little while back, for $2,000, just like that. It was called, oh yeah, fish. Fish on, fit on, and fish off, and it took the worm. Okay, I'm freezing, my hands are freezing, I think my phone is soaked. I hope this helps, if it does, share it around. Uh, people need to know that there are ways to make money even if they are being literally forbidden from working by the government. Peace. Oh, jeez.